I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School in Phoenix, Arizona. And today's presentation is about the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is a really important part of the cell. Now, we have been looking at cells and we generally see them kind of as a diagram, a circular shape, see some organelles inside of them, maybe um, some ribosomes in there. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus in on this membrane that's around the cell. Over the next few lessons, we're gonna be focusing in a lot on different organelles within the cell. But this one is, you know, about the complexity of the cell membrane. So you notice that in these diagrams that we've looked at before, you know, it's basically just a line around the cell. Well, if you look at this picture, you'll see that it's a lot more complex than you might think at first. So this part right here, this outer region is outside the cell. And down here, this is inside the cell. So this represents the inside of the cell here. So when you look at this cell membrane, you notice that it's made up of a lot of different parts. It has some protein molecules, some carbohydrates, Here's a protein channel, another protein channel over here, and this is called the lipid bilayer. So you'll notice that there's kind of two layers on this cell membrane and a little bit of um, a space or a gap in here. And we're going to take a close look at each one of those parts and see exactly what they do for the cell. So the first part we're going to look at is we're going to look at that phospholipid bilayer. And this is a really important part of the cell. You'll notice here that this is made up of two parts. The first part is this hydrophilic heads. And hydrophilic means that it loves water. Okay, it's kind of like us in the summertime, love the water in Arizona. So this is the hydrophilic part. That means that these particular parts of this bilayer, they love to be around water. Well, that's good because this outside of the cell is a water environment. And this inside of the cell is a water environment. So you need those hydrophilic heads that love water because that's what they're exposed to all the time, water. Now, inside here, we call these the tails, okay? and they are hydrophobic. That means they hate water. Okay, so hydrophobic means that they hate water. Well, this is a good thing for the cell because they, being in here and pointing towards each other, that means that they keep the water from just moving in and out of the cell as much as it wants to. If it wasn't for this hydrophobic barrier right here, this outside water would be in and this inside water would be out and you really wouldn't have any definition to the cell. So the phospholipid bilayer, it keeps the structure of the cell, keeps the inside in and the outside out, which is really important to okay, the cell. So some cell membrane proteins because as you can imagine, you know, there's this outside of the cell and there's this inside of the cell. Well, sometimes the cell needs things from the outside and sometimes it needs to take things from the inside and get them out. So it has to be able to do that and it, that means it needs to move things across this phospholipid bilayer. And there's some proteins that help with that. The first one we're going to talk about is merely a cell surface marker. This just identifies the cell type. Since cells are all together and they're working together, they need to communicate with each other. And so this communicates what type of cell it is. The next one is a receptor protein and basically does exactly what it sounds like. It receives things. So it recognizes the substance and it binds to the substance on the outside and it'll bring it in if it's okay. It's like a receptionist. It's going to kind of evaluate first. All right, the next one is an enzyme and we've talked about enzymes and how important they are to the chemical reactions that are occurring in the cells. And enzymes are proteins, so there are enzymes on the cell membrane. And then this last one is a transport protein, and it does exactly what it sounds like it would do. It transports things either into the cell or out of the cell through that gap right there.